This is an exploit that creates an admin user without the need for credentials. In this video, we will analyze this crushed FTP vulnerability, develop an exploit, and see how we can defend against it. Crush FTP is a popular enterprise-grade FTP server. Last year, I created a video demonstrating a Crush FTP exploit, but for a different vulnerability which allows arbitrary file read via server-side template injection. It got me curious why this FTP server keeps on having severe vulnerabilities, so I decided to create another video. There is a good vulnerability analysis from Project Discovery, so for most part, we will refer to that. Just ignore the CVE number from this blog post as this was replaced with a newer one. The basic exploit payload looks like this. We need to talk to the Crush FTP API using this endpoint format. The important the important thing here is the command parameter. There are various commands we can use. This example uses a command that lists the users in the application, but later we will use a different command to create a regular user and give it an admin permission. The next important part of the payload is the crush auth cookie. This can be any random value but must be 44 characters in length. And the last four characters must match the C2F parameter. The last will be the authorization header. The first part is related to S3 authorization. We don't need to put a valid token here as the vulnerable part of the code only checks for the first nine characters. The last part is related to the username. There is a series of methods that extracts only the first part of the value so we can just put any valid default username. When I was looking at this vulnerability analysis, I was impressed how the researchers put up the technical details. But there is one thing I got more curious about. If Crush FTP is a closed source application, how come they were able to read the code? These security researchers may have their own methods of doing it, but this is the method I know. Run an old version of Crush FTP server in Docker. Copy the jar file from the application directory to your local machine. Open a Java decompiler. Once that is up, open the jar file you got from the Docker container. Then you can search for the relevant strings in the code you want to look at. For example, I want to see how sessions are being handled, so I will construct my search like this. Java programs are compiled into bytecodes, so this decompiler allows us to reverse engineer it and see the human readable code. If I want to perform patch diffing, I will repeat the same process, but this time I will download an updated version of Crush FTP. Then I will copy the code from the vulnerable and fixed version and perform the diff on my local machine. Now that we have an understanding of the vulnerability, let's create our exploit. The payload we saw from the earlier slide only gets the current list of users. Let's go one step further. So instead of that, let's try to create a user with admin privileges. Similar with my previous exploit development videos, I always start with the base structure of my script. First is to import the needed modules. Set up the command line parameters the script would need and put the placeholder functions. Let's quickly understand this. We need to import two modules, ARD parse for handling command line parameters and requests for interacting with the Crush FTP web server. There are four arguments here. The first one is for specifying the target IP address. Next will be the target port. We can make this optional by providing a default value. The last two will be the account we want to create on the application. We need to parse those arguments so that the values will be available throughout the global namespace. After that, we will have two functions here. First is to create the user account. We are not expecting to return anything, so we will put none as the return type. And let's put a placeholder code for now. Then at the bottom, we will call them in sequence. Before we put the necessary code on those functions, we must confirm first that we can trigger the authentication bypass vulnerability. That is important because that will allow us to create a user without logging in as admin to the application. To do that, we need to copy the exact payload from the vulnerability analysis page. I updated the code to put a function that will test the vulnerability. We imported here URL lib so that we can disable the TLS warnings. Then we will pass the request through burp proxy so we can inspect in case we will have any issues. Then in this line, we have the exact URL from the vulnerability analysis. We also need the headers as part of a successful exploit. Then we will send our request under this verification function. This is just a get request. We pass the target URL, the proxies, the headers that will contain the random cookie. And lastly, we will ignore the certificates. Below that, we will print the result to see if it is successful or not. Finally, we will call our testing function. Let's run a vulnerable crush FTP version from Docker. Then let's make sure there are no errors from startup logs. Then let's run the script. Even though we pass the username and password for the user we want to create, this will not have any effect since the relevant function still doesn't have any code. We see an error here. But this might be okay because we might have been able to get an authenticated session. To confirm, let's force the vulnerability to fail by changing this last character of C2F parameter. Then let's run again. 
This time it says access denied, which means we were able to trigger the vulnerability on the previous call. Now that we have a way to access the application, let's now proceed in putting the necessary code on the two functions. Now we are on the fun part. The vulnerability analysis didn't show how to create an admin user, so we need to figure it on our own. Crush FTP has this API documentation, so let's explore this. There is a curl command here that creates a regular user. VFS is the virtual file system which holds the user's files and folders. Based from curl, we need to pass several data parameters here, so that means we need to send our request as post instead of get. These parameters include the command which is set user item, data action which is set to replace, XML item which is user, server group which is the group where the user will belong, and the username. Aside from that, you can also notice here that it passes various XML files. The first one looks like an extra information about the user. Second seems the layout of the virtual file system. And the last will be the permissions. The question is, what is the format of these files? Under this tab, we can see that they attach some example XML files so we can just download them on our local. Let's see how the files look like. So the user XML contains the password. The VFS items contain the username and the path. Then the permissions XML contains the privileges the user have, which seems limited only to its virtual file system. Using the auth bypass technique and the information we gathered from the Crush FTP API documentation, I was able to complete our create user function. Since this is now a post request, we need to change our target URL to just a single endpoint. Most of the parameters we see here a while ago will be moved to the content body. Then the data parameters is here inside this dictionary. These are just the same from what we see from the documentation. That includes the command, data action, XML item, server group, username, and the three XML files. Notice here that we also add the C2F parameter since this is required to trigger the vulnerability. The format of the post request will be the same as usual. Then we still want to print the result so we see if our exploit is successful or not. Let's have a look on what was my strategy for the XML files. You can see here that we can just put it inside an F string. We need to do that because we need to pass the options inside like the password. Similar concept is applied to the other two XML files. Now if we run this again, the username and password will now be used effectively and we have an okay response, which means the exploit is successful. We can confirm that by looking inside the Crush FTP dashboard. I'll just click reload and we will be able to see the newly created clown user. The last part will be easy. We just need to make the user an admin. In Crush FTP, we can do that using inheritance. The payload is very similar on how to create a regular user with very few differences. The XML item is inheritance. Data action is add instead of replace. And the inheritance name must be set. This is the user we would like to inherit the permissions from. In our case, we need to inherit it from the admin user, which is Crush Admin. After that, we need to pass our target user, which in this case is Clown. Finally, notice also that we no longer need to pass any XML files. Let's see how the function looks like. The data we pass on the request is much simpler. That only includes the command, data action, XML item, server group, username, inheritance name, and the C2F parameter. We don't need to change anything in the format of the post request. Finally, we will just print the output at the end. Now let's run this. We got two similar responses, which most likely indicate that both are successful. User is created, and if we go at the bottom right, we see it is now admin. We also see that this option is now checked. As we notice in this video, it is very easy to exploit the vulnerability. The fix is to update to the latest version. There are some possible reasons why this application has several high critical vulnerabilities in the recent years. First one is because it is complex. It involves several protocols, it's extensible via plugins, and it allows also scripting. Those things makes the attack surface large. Another thing is that Crush FTP has been around for more than 20 years, so it may contain legacy design patterns that is not yet adapted to the best practices for modern apps. It is also closed source, meaning it doesn't benefit from the large community that can peer review the code. Crush FTP is one of the favorite targets of attackers because it is a managed file transfer, so it is typically exposed over the public internet. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.